Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you Microsoft Azure AD Federation with Apple Business Manager. So, getting into it here, a couple of different reasons why you would want to set this up and manage devices with managed Apple IDs using Federation with Microsoft Azure AD. If you've already got a 365 tenant and you're looking at the MDM solution, which is Intune. The federation that you want to set up here can allow you to do a lot of different things that I'll outline here. So when you set this up, which I'll be demoing here today, you have the ability to authenticate with your Azure AD credentials into a managed Apple ID account. So you'll have your own personal cloud drive, everything like that that's associated with the business, but does allow the administrator to have data separation when it comes to iOS devices, and it does allow them to remove the managed profile once that person leaves the organization. So the integration with Intune here, ABM, if you are familiar with it, Apple Business Manager, does allow you to integrate with MDM providers such as Intune or Jamf, probably the most popular. When you do integrate with Intune, the features that you have available with you there involve a lot of things like you would see with Windows Autopilot, if you are familiar. So you are able to add hardware providers into that account as well too to procure new devices, new Mac OS devices. And by doing so, you can deploy a managed profile from Intune to that device so that it, when it boots up, you define the out-of-box experience and you can immediately push out profiles, applications, things of that nature. So someone can go straight from box to production in a matter of minutes and they get to use their managed Apple ID to federate into the account with their Azure Active Directory credentials. With iOS devices, I mentioned they have user enrollment features. So this is a BYOD device or anything like that. When they go to enroll that, they can add their managed Apple ID with user enrollment. And by doing so, they create two Apple IDs on the device itself, one for their personal account and one for the corporate account. By doing so, you have this data separation so that it separates out personal versus corporate data across all applications like Cloud Drive, Notes, things like that. And when they unenroll that device, or if you want, because it's part of your MDM solution, you wipe that device or erase that device, it does remove the Manage Apple ID on there. In the case of employee just leaving, moving the Managed Apple ID on an iOS device, does remove all of the corporate data, which is essential, especially with compliance regulations, things like that. So by having this set up, as far as the federation goes, you really can control the device lifecycle in the sense that a user on board, you hand them this new device. If it's integrated with Intune, you're giving them the ability to have an out-of-box experience with all of the things that they need to be productive and you can wipe that device when you have change management. That employee leaves, you reissue that computer to another user within the company. You can simply wipe it within Intune and the next user gets it to then add their profile and so forth. Additionally, with iOS devices, if they are BYOD, you have that data separation as well too. So you can clearly manage those devices even if uh, they are ones not procured by the company. Some of the prerequisites that you'll go through here that I'll make another video for, for MDM push certificates. So MDM push certificates is part of Intune and it allows you to manage iOS and Mac devices within Intune. It's very easy to set up. It takes just a couple of minutes with a managed Apple ID. That's your one we use for central management across all of your customers. The other piece to this is ABM account registration. So Apple Business Manager account registration. So if you go to set this up, this will be at a customer level where you want to submit an application if they haven't already set this up as far as managed Apple account or managed Apple ID. So when doing so, you have to get their DUNS number. And this is something if you're not familiar with, you go to DUNS and Bradstreet and you can look up what that is and have it emailed to you. And then that is what you need to submit an application to Apple Business Manager to set this up. It'll go through this approval process and you'll get, it's up to five business days. You could probably call them to expedite it, um, but it does go through this approval process and you'll get a verification call whenever that's done. That's usually the CEO or whoever owns the company will get that call and then you'll go through and get approved so that it sets up the account and you can begin this process of 
federating a Microsoft domain for managed Apple IDs. So getting into it here, we're going to go into just a, a bit of a demo. In looking at it here, this is the Apple Business Manager account. I've already set up my domain and here what we want to do is click on edit. We have to verify the domain with a text record, much like you're familiar with if you've registered a domain in Office 365. So here we're going to go ahead and simply just copy the TXT record and we're going to go to our DNS settings from our domain registrar. In this case, it's uh, GoDaddy for myself. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in that TXT value and I'm going to put in at for the host. And then I'll go down and I'll click on save. So this for me takes a couple of minutes just because GoDaddy is pretty fast about updating these records. Um, other providers though, you may have to wait a certain amount of time before this will pass the verification. So as you can see here, it's not right away. Um, I had to wait here about a minute and it's saying that you have to prove ownership and you have 14 days to do so whenever you set this account up. So there it went through right away and we'll click on done for now. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the federated authentication with Microsoft. So we click on edit here and we click on connect. And here, all we need to do is provide the global administrative credentials for this customer's tenant. So we'll go ahead and type those in here. And we'll type in our password. And we'll have our two-factor here that we will accept. And it's just going to ask you to consent so that it can read these user profiles to perform that federation. So you can go ahead and click on OK. It'll give you a success if you put the credentials in correctly and authenticate it correctly. So the next thing that uh, we're going to do here, you'll see that it unhighlighted the domain. It uh, is basically mentioning that you can only have one federated domain in the account at one time. So it, it unlights uh, it there. So the next thing we want to do, this will show up after a couple minutes. You'll click on federate on that domain and you will have to sign in one more time with the global administrative credentials here. And I'll go ahead and type in that password again. And I will consent. So now what it's going to do here, it's going to make sure that any of the Usernames within the active tenant do not already have an Apple ID because it's going to want to manage those in this account. So it's going to look and check for any domain conflicts. Obviously, this depends on how many users are in the account for how long it'll take, but we'll check back in on that in just a few minutes here. While we're doing that, we'll go ahead and set up Intune as our MDM server. And this allow MDM server to release devices gives you the ability to say, oh, I'm not managing this anymore, and you are legally required to release devices that you no longer own. So you can check back, but you can click on the Learn Now, like I'm doing here, just to learn a little bit more information about what this entails, just in case you don't want to do that within your particular organization. Now we need to grab this server key that we need to upload. So for this, we'll log into the admin center for the tenant in question and go to the endpoint manager portal. Here what we're going to do is go under devices and we're going to click on Mac OS and then we're going to click on Mac OS enrollment and here we're going to click on enrollment program tokens and click on add. So here you're just going to consent and you're going to download this public key here it's going to download there and you're going to, it's giving you links to go back to the device enrollment program. So that would just open up Business Manager again if you weren't already there. But I am. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that file that just downloaded and upload it here. And then I'll click on save. 
This happens almost immediately and I can go ahead and download the token up top here that I'll need to put on the Intune side of things so both environments can talk to one another. I'll have to add my managed Apple ID here, the one that I set up the Apple Business Manager account with originally. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that file I just downloaded from ABM into Intune. Click on Open and then click Next. It's giving me just a summary and I can click on Create. So it adds a token and it successfully authenticates here. So it's now it's active. It'll be active for a year. So everything's done on that end. So back in the ABM account here, we have that domain processing completed and it shows us this one name conflict. So we have the ability to send that end user a notification telling them that this domain is now federated and they will have to relinquish their ownership and change that Apple ID in a matter of 60 days. So they'll get an email notification, which I'll show you here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on Federation and you can view the activity of that within the portal. It just brings you on into the Federation enabled section here of activities and it shows again just that one issue. But then an account out there already does have that managed Apple ID. So we'll pop into that and see that here in just a minute. So let me pop into their account. And you see that it's just giving them a pretty straightforward message with a link here that we can use to go straight into the Apple ID account and get that changed. So when they click on that link, they have to provide their security questions, which I'll do here. And from there, they need to just give a new updated ID. So it's telling them that they won't be able to use that in the future because it's being claimed by Alchemy Assets. In this case, it's the company name. So we'll have to pick a new one here. I'm just going through and deciding on what that'll be here. Usually, they can just switch it to a new personal one, but they will still have access to you know whatever's in that account as long as they change it here but they have to know that they have to get this done within 60 days. So you'll get that and you'll put in your verification code for two-factor if you got that set up. And then that's everything that you would need from the, the conflict type of thing there as far as getting that done. Now, new users here who try to do and go through uh, the federation process, they can type in their Azure Active Directory credentials and it will prompt them to authenticate here, but it's going to tell them they need to do this on a managed device by going up and setting it up with iCloud and just setting up an iCloud account. So we're going to pop into a Mac OS device here. This is Catalina OS and we're going to do the same process. So we're just going to add an Apple ID here. We're going to click on next and it will open up here for us to prompt for a password. And it's telling us, hey, you're with Alchemy Assets. Go ahead and sign in with your Active Directory credentials. So same window here, same experience. We'll have to type this in. Click on Sign In. And then click on Continue. And then it starts to load any managed ID configuration items that you set, such as documents in the iCloud, the managed business iCloud account, or any assets that you may have here as well too. So this will load up the profile, and as you can see here, it's going through and just loading up all of those settings. So it's a very easy process for them. This is just the experience with their doing it ad hoc, and they've already had this device. Like I mentioned earlier though, you do have that enrollment program for new devices where they are setting up that managed Apple ID upon first boot and you're defining because of the settings that you've configured in Intune what their experience looks like out of the box such as all the settings they'll see being prompted to put in their managed Apple ID and then you have full control over that device and its life cycle. So the next thing I just wanted to show back in ABM after he's done that his name comes up here and it shows that the source of the federation was from Microsoft Azure Active Directory. So everything looks like we wanted to there as well. 
that's everything I wanted to show you as far as the demo goes. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments on Microsoft Azure Active Directory Federation, please leave them below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see additional content. Thanks and have a great day.